Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, November 29th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, November 30th. You could say it was a little bit of a disappointing day. We had a gap higher open. We set the high right after the open and then spent the rest of the day coming down, and we ended up closing negative on the day. We really haven't gone anywhere. We're more like on a treadmill right now, at least on a closing basis. But we did see a wider spread between the high and the low. So that's helping our pivot points to expand just a little bit to give at least the algorithms a little bit more chance to run either to the upside or the downside. We're still looking positive, but we are still overextended to the upside. We could be coming into some weak seasonality, at least for Thursday's session. So let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a gap higher. We were above R2 at 45.82. That set the high for the day. And then we declined down to R1 at 45.69. As the day went on, we came down to the unchanged level, which pretty much was right at the daily pivot as well. That was at 45.55. We rebounded back up to R1 and it looked like, okay, we filled the gap. We came down a little bit. We're starting to go back up. All right, here we go but we declined back below the unchanged level and the daily pivot to close negative. So we saw weakness later on in the session. We were down 0.09% on above average volume. We haven't seen that in a while. So this is the period of time when some mutual funds are doing their distributions. They saw the gap higher open. They probably used that opportunity to sell some positions, lock in some gains. That will help their end of year statements look a little bit better. And so there's a little bit of that game playing going on right now. We're still positive, though. And so there are some things that we can latch on to. But at the same time, there are some warning signs that we need to be aware of. So the technicals are positive. We're still dealing with inflation, interest rates, and growth concerns. And we're going to get some big influential reports in Thursday session. We had one in Wednesday session that seemed to be more market friendly. That's what helped the market gap higher. But Thursday and Friday, we're getting some big economic reports. We're also keeping an eye on what's going on in Israel. The mega caps underperformed. This is one of those sessions where the broader market actually did a better job in Wednesday session than the big mega cap stocks did. There was pleasing information that came out of Germany, Spain, and Australia. So, okay, that kind of set a more positive tone. Richmond Fed President Barkin, who will be a voter in 2024, said that it's premature to talk about rate cuts and that he's not taking the possibility of further rate cuts off of the table. He thinks that inflation is likely to be more stubborn than desired. You could eh, take that kind of as a negative statement. Oil ended up closing up at 77.84. Again, not really that influential right now in the market. On a short-term basis, our short-term ADX is starting to cross above 40. So that's looking a little extreme. The 20-period exponential moving average, the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, and the Stochastics, the PMO oscillator, that in and of itself, that's one of our momentum oscillators. It's starting to look extreme. We still have the RSI based on nine periods and the slope oscillator. It's still extreme, but now it's coming down and it's dropped below its moving average. Intermediate term, we still have the PMO studies, the rate of change going back 20 periods, the TTM squeeze, the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100, the new high, new low study for the S&P 500. And we're still dealing with this current scenario. It hasn't really changed. It modifies from day to day, depending on if it's more positive or negative. Started out a little bit more positive, but then ended up being a little bit more negative. That the Fed is going to have to keep rates higher for longer. And maybe they are done raising rates. That's what the market's trying to decide right now. And possibly even rate cuts going into the future. <clears throat> but then when you have Fed officials coming out saying, well, if things get strong again, we might have to raise rates. So there's this real debate and battle going back and forth, keeping an eye on Israel, oil, and then or earnings as they are released. The dollar was up and interest rates were down. The 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 month, those yield curves are inverted and remain inverted. We did tick down just a little bit with the slightly lower close. We're at 64, which is still positive, where we ticked down from 65. And our trend is still positive. The ADX is strengthening. It's above its moving average. 
But in the short term, we're starting to look extreme. That usually leads before we get to the intermediate term chart. Our bias is mixed because we had the slight down day, and our, but our momentum still continues to be positive. So the economic reports that came out, we had the MBA Mortgage Applications Index. It was up 0.3%. Last time it was up 3%. Then we had the third quarter GDP, the second estimate, which came in stronger than expected at 5.2%. That suggests a good, solid economy for right now, where last time it came in at 4.9% which is what they had expected. Then the deflator, it came in down a little bit more where it came in at 3.6%. They had expected 3.8%. Last time it was at 3.5%. Then the inter international trading goods, it was at a minus 89.8 billion. Last time it was at a minus 86.8 billion. The retail inventories were unchanged. Last time it was up 0.4%. Wholesale inventories were down 0.2%. Last time they were up 0.1%. And then the only charts I'm going to show, here's the mortgage applications index where we were still positive, but we really decreased from the previous reading. And then the real GDP, that is the blue line here, which is starting to go up, suggesting that, man, this economy really looks kind of healthy right now. 5 to 6% GDP is kind of what economies shoot for. So it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's showing some growth. And then the deflator is also going back up a little bit on a quarter over quarter basis. But month over month, it did decline from the last report. Then looking at personal consumption year over year, it's starting to go up a little bit, suggesting that the economy is hanging in there. And then the exports decline just a little bit showing that we're exporting less than what we're bringing in. And then real GDP, real means that it takes inflation into account where it's showing in advance on a year over year basis. We did close at 4.27% for the 10 year yield. That's still above the 4.02%, but we are inching our way back down slightly. We'll have to see if we can get back down to that 4.02%. Here's the intraday chart where we gapped higher right at R2. We did try to go up a few times, but that just wasn't really happening. We ended up coming back down to R1. We tried to set a base here. Instead of going up higher, we came all the way down to the unchanged level, which was also the daily pivot. That's where it looked like we were going to see a little bit of a bounce, at least turning things more positive. But we came right back up to R1. We could not break above that. So we saw some selling later in the day. We actually dropped a negative and then ended up closing down slightly. Here's the intraday chart where we saw a lot of the strength earlier before the market even opened. We gapped higher and then spent the rest of the day coming down. We're not really showing a big change in the initial overnight session. We are seeing value outperforming growth. The red line was positive where the blue line was negative. That's not necessarily positive. Our intraday chart also shows how the growth to value ratio did underperform in Wednesday session, not really positive. Our end of day chart shows where growth was down for the large caps, where it was up with value. It outperformed for the mid caps, but underperformed for the small caps. And this ratio is not really showing an awful lot of strength. We want to see it going up as the index had been going up, and we're not seeing that right now. Looking at our trend, this is still looking okay. We have the ADX above the moving average, and it's going higher, suggesting that this trend is strengthening. The green line, after getting close to this 40 level, dropped back and actually turned up just a little bit, and the red line continues to decline. This is the intermediate term chart. When we look at the short term chart, the ADX itself is now starting to break above 40. That could suggest some exhaustion. And you can see other times when we got above this level, topped out and started to come down, sometimes that produced a bit of a decline. Other times it ended up seeing an actual reversal. So we don't know how it's going to play out this time, but we're just, we want to be aware of this. Volume is picking up just a little bit. We were above average, but when you take all the last number of days together, we've been below average. I moved this over just a little bit. We might be getting into this choppy period now as we get into the latter part of November and into the early part of December with the VIX possibly starting to decline after that. That would be positive for stocks. The ulcer index really isn't moving all that much, suggesting that there's not a lot of fear or taken another way. There's a lot of complacency in the market. 
looking at the line chart of the VIX, we did end up closing a little bit higher, but we were pretty much flat when we look at the bar chart. Volatility is picking up just a little bit, but we're still below the moving averages when we look at the VIX of the VIX. We are still declining when we look at the VIX to VVIX ratio. That is longer term positive. And we're also continuing to decline with the VIX and then looking at the three month average of the VIX. The VIX to move ratio just shows that stocks are less volatile than bonds currently. And this has not updated again. I've waited for many hours for this to update and it just, so I haven't updated these charts. There's really not much we can do without any updated data. We just kind of have to go with what's already there. The one fear gauge that we look at did show a decline or the other fear gauge that we also follow is starting to tick back up. So we're seeing kind of a mixed picture when it comes to sentiment. The risk on risk off ratio did tick up a little bit. So again, are we gonna show some improvement? We wanna see this really start to go back up where overall it has been coming down. That tends to be more negative. If it turns and goes back up, that would be more positive. The advanced decline line, we ticked up just a little bit based on price and volume and we're above the moving average. The new highs, they're continuing to expand and we're not really seeing any new lows. So our five period is doing okay, but our 10 period is now starting to roll over as some of these lower figures are starting to get computed into the 10 day average. We're still looking okay with the advanced decline ratio, both with the blue line and the red line. We're above zero, so that's positive. Accumulation distribution is coming down, but we're still above an advancing moving average. The chicken money flow after really topping out is now starting to come back down. This was giving us a pretty extreme reading. We'll have to see how this behaves over the next few sessions. We did show a little bit of an improvement with our cumulative NYSE advanced decline line, but we're not back up to this trend line. We are showing some improvement with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE, also showing some improvement here as well. If we can stay above these moving averages, eventually we might see a golden cross. We're seeing a little bit of a breakout here with our common stock NYSE advanced decline line based on volume, where that is starting to break out, but we are not seeing a corresponding breakout in price. I would take that more as positive because last time, last week, we did break out first based on volume, and then later we broke out based on price. Or is this just an anomaly and things will get lined up in Thursday's session? I see this as more positive. Generally, when we see price leading volume, that tends to be more negative. Here we're seeing volume leading price. <clears throat> Looking at our advanced decline line studies, we're still turning back up just a little bit with the NYSE common stock. We turned up with the S&P, the mid caps, and the small caps actually turned up a little bit above their moving average. The short-term chart where we're still hanging in there okay, we're pretty much chopping sideways. Now this is not positive to open up here right at resistance and then spend the rest of the day coming down. That's a bit of a warning sign, but when we take all these bars together, we're still hanging in there for right now. On the bottom, we finally saw an above average volume day, first one we've seen in quite a while. We're still just barely extreme positive with our 20 period exponential moving average. We turned up with the 50 and we're going slightly higher with the 200. The Stoke RSI is declining, but is still extreme positive as is the Williams percent R. We're dropping below the midpoint now and the midpoint starting to turn down with the force index. This is a little bit of a warning sign that we're seeing some weakness here, but we're still positive even though, because we're above zero and we're still green. We're still extreme positive with the stochastics <clears throat> when we look at the short, intermediate, and long term. We're coming down just a little bit. We're in the plus three standard deviation now. We want to see it drop down to the two, plus two standard deviation to kind of work off this extreme positive reading. We're no longer extreme with the boom indicator based on 20 periods. We turned down just a little bit with the 50 and 200, but still these are holding up fairly well. Some intermediate term charts. We continue to decline with the balance of power, but we're still above zero. The go-no-go -no -go system is still positive with the solid blue bars. We're coming down just a little bit with our highest high value, but the midpoint continues to advance. The longer we can stay above that, the more positive this will remain. The TTM squeeze is coming back down. We have the darker shade of blue. It's still extreme positive, but it is starting to work off that reading. Longer term, where we did get an extreme reading, again, we had another extreme reading here, and as I tried to point out, this was more of a quick return 
when we were going up and we changed really fast, we're here, we're coming up, getting an extreme reading, and we're chopping more or less sideways. We're still extreme at the rate of change going back 20 periods, even though it is declining. And when we look at the ease of movement, it actually turned up just a little bit. So that's somewhat positive. And this is remaining positive. The Arun indicator showing a little bit of strength. We saw the green line go up. So that means buyers are in control. The red line is coming down. Sellers are not in control right now. That's why we're getting the positive result with the oscillator. <clears throat> we continue to go higher with the summation index based on price and volume. And the NYSE summation index based on price and volume are also continuing to advance. We're a little bit negative here with the Swinland Trading Oscillator, but we turned up just a little bit based on volume. So we're seeing a bit of a discrepancy here. This is the PMO. We're starting to get up to this red line. Now we can go above this, but we just want to be aware when we go into this extreme positive territory that sometimes that will mark an extreme reading. We're continuing to go up based on price and volume. We're no longer extreme with the PMOs that are rising. We're turning down, but still extreme with the buy signals. We continue to be positive with the PMOs above zero. We continue to be neutral for the elders impulse system on the S&P. We continue to be positive with the parabolic SAR. Here's the slope oscillator. After getting a really high reading, starting to come back down, dropping further below its moving average. The MACD rolling over, but it's still positive. Our oscillators, we're getting a little concerned about this slope oscillator. The TSI is starting to get extreme, rolling over just a little bit, but still positive with the MACD, the PMO, and the PPO is starting to roll over a bit, where we're still positive with the tricks and KST. We're crossing above the extreme positive reading with the KST, and we're just about ready to cross over with the tricks. So this is suggesting some extreme positive readings. The Sean trend meter did decline just a little bit below this red line, so it's no longer extreme. And we're still looking okay when we look at all of our different moving averages. And the bullish percent index, this is still hanging in there. It's still chopping a little bit higher. When we had that gap higher open, a lot of new point and figure buy signals were generated. And so this is suggesting that the strength in the S&P is still remaining. And we're crossing a bit above 50 again with our NYSE bullish percent index. That's still staying positive. And we're turning back up with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We almost came down to a sell signal and then saw some strength in Wednesday's session. We are declining with the chicken oscillator, but we're still above zero. The money flow is pretty much flat after giving us an extreme positive reading. The ultimate oscillator is declining, but still above 50. The vortex is flattening out with the green line a little bit. Maybe it's worked off some of that extreme condition but we're still positive on this chart. The RSI 14 has now dropped below the extreme positive reading where we're still extreme with the RSI 9. On balance volume is still above an advancing moving average. And we turned a bit up with our 200 day moving average study and we were pretty much flat with the 50 period moving average study. The copy curve buy signal is now going away. This is starting to turn into a sell signal. And longer term, we were getting to kind of an extreme reading, so it's not surprising that it's rolling over. We'll have to see if we see other confirmation with our other indicators. Looking at the trend line, I tried to straighten out this line here. We're just battling and camping out right at about this previous high. Now, we're still looking okay if you take all of these bars together. But if you take Wednesday's bar to open and then get up high and then close down at the low, that's not very positive looking. So we, we could read this a couple of different ways. Our different charts, we're still looking okay on a trend basis. The hike in Ashi is positive, the Keggy is positive, the Renko is positive, and the three-line break is positive. Then our longer-term chart, we're not seeing any real improvement yet with the Zohorchak method. We're just pretty much one, maybe one to two ticks away from generating a sell signal. If we get some strength back in the market, if this positive seasonality comes into play or, throughout the month of December, we would want to see this indicator go back up. Our different indexes. We were down with the S&P. We were actually up with the equal weight, but longer term, the equal weight is underperforming the S&P. We actually declined just a little bit with our ratio between the S&P and the equal weight. And I would take that more as positive because as we've been seeing this really run up, that means the mega caps are participating 
when we see this go down, that means the broader market is actually performing better. We were up with the Dow, but we were down with the transports. Again, something that's not really encouraging right now. We did see the utilities decline slightly, and the transports continue to underperform the Dow. We're going up with this ratio, meaning the Dow is outperforming. We're going down with this ratio, meaning the transports are underperforming. The Dow is still looking okay. Even though it closed well off of its high, this longer-term price pattern here is still looking fairly positive, but we continue to be neutral with the Elder's Impulse system. The NASDAQ also closed well off of its high, but we're still maintaining price above this pivot level, and we're still above this 61.8% retracement level. The NASDAQ 100 also closed well off of its high, but still holding on to support. We remain neutral for the QQQs when we look at the Elder's Impulse system. The momentum is showing some weakness now. We're still positive, but we're starting to roll over. The small caps, which continue to chop sideways, they opened above their 200-day moving average, only to come right back down into this sideways trend that we've been seeing. And when we look at the Russell, we were up slightly with the RSI and we're above 50. We're still working off of a longer term downtrend. We closed back below the 200 day moving average. The momentum is showing some weakness, but we are still positive when we look at the MACD. And the Elder's Impulse system remains neutral for the small caps. The mid caps are still above their 200 day moving average, but they still remain neutral with the Elder's Impulse system. The financial sector was up and showing some improvement, and we're coming off of a recent golden cross. The micro caps were actually up a little bit on the day and are still above 100. The FANG index was down almost half a percent, and they've been chopping more or less sideways, and we're still battling with this previous all-time high here. We've not been able to close above that. We can get above it intraday, but then we end up closing down below that level. The dollar was up in Wednesday's session and continues to be in an uptrend, even though it's been seeing some recent weakness. Keeping an eye on bonds, we were down with the 10-year yield, which means we were up with the 10-year price. And this is still looking kind of crazy here. We get, we're getting a positive reading of 0.08. I thought it would work itself out after the holiday weekend. This is continuing to go up, which is not what should be happening when you take the one month yield and subtract the three month yield. An update of our possible positive scenarios, the growth to value ratio between the Qs and the S&P shows that we're hanging in there pretty positive. We turned up a bit with discretionary to the S&P and large cap growth turned down just a little bit, but it's still above the moving average when compared to large cap value. So when we look at the large caps, the mid caps, they're still hanging in there above their moving average where the small caps are showing some weakness. And we look at the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows, we're still getting an extreme positive reading. This is the third or fourth day we've been seeing this now, which is suggesting good momentum. And we're still above zero with our five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows for the broad market. The longer we can stay above this, the more the broad market should be improving. And we're still going above zero with our new highs, new lows study based on 50 periods. That's longer term positive. And the moving average, the red line, is starting to turn and come back above zero. This is another thing. We seem to have topped out with the two-year yield, and we're starting to come back down, but we're not really seeing all that much support given to the S&P while this has been happening. The S&P to utilities ratio, chopping around a little bit, but longer term continues to be going up. Even though the utilities were down, we didn't see the S&P show a real advance, at least by the close. The ratio between the staples and the S&P declined slightly. Longer term, we're also declining, which could be positive for the S&P. We did decline just a little bit with our 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. It's coming down after getting an extreme positive reading based on price. Also declined slightly based on volume. And then this will be the last month or day of the month until I get the next chart here from Tom Bally's research, where we tend to be positive as we finish out November. So what's our outlook for Thursday? Still dealing with earnings, still dealing with geopolitical events. We're still positive, but we are maintaining an overbought condition right now with the possibility of some weakness starting to develop. We'll get the weekly jobless claims, personal income and spending, PCE prices, that's a big one, the Chicago PMI, and then pending home sales, and then all of the different geopolitical events that are occurring.
Here's the calendar showing on Friday, we're going to get ISM manufacturing. For November 30th, we're kind of across the board here with the Stock Traders Almanac statistics. We're neutral to positive with the Dow. We're flat out negative with the S&P and we're neutral to negative with the NASDAQ. And we'll be, we'll be on the 21st trading day of the month, which will be the last trading day where during a pre-election year, we're pretty much flat. When you take all the years together, we tend to be more positive. And then here's just December, just to give you kind of a preview. It looks like we're kind of flat through the early part of December. When we start to see more strength is when we come into the latter part of the month. The pre-election year cycle, we're coming at the end of November, now into the early part of December. That seems to be pretty much flat. We're, we're coming in here where we kind of chop around to pretty much sideways when you look at the 1990 to 2022 average return. But here we see more positive seasonality as we finish out the month of November. We might see some weakness. And then going forward into December, things tend to be more positive. We also see kind of that same thing when we look at election versus non-election years. The Carson research does suggest that we might see some weakness for the first part of December before things turn back more positive. Here's another chart that I started including after the weekend where we see a little bit of a dip right at the end of November. Then we see some strength. And then after the first part of December, that's when we see a little bit of a notch down before we see more positive seasonality. Looking at the NASDAQ with the Stock Traders Almanac statistics, where this looks more positive and the S&P tends to look more positive. So you see we're getting different kinds of results when we look at these charts. That's why my personal opinion is to get as many charts to you as, you can, as I can to show you a lot of different variables. Some may think that's overdoing it. I like to take as much information as possible to evaluate things. So our scenarios, we're not going with the down one yet, even though weakness may be developing, even though we might have a weak seasonal day, but our charts are still positive. And so that's the side that we're leaning towards. We're not going with the sideways trend because even though the short-term ADX is getting extreme, that's still suggesting that there is a trend. And then the warning signs, and I can't really update the equity put call studies because those charts didn't update. The risk on posture, it'd be nice if that really kicked into gear and started to go higher, but it's just not really doing that yet. We still have longer term downtrends with the Russell small caps and the mid caps. And then the positive signs, the daily special K chart is still positive. We're still looking positive on a momentum basis with the S&P and NASDAQ, but we're starting to see some signs of rolling over in the short and a little bit in the intermediate term. The parabolic SAR chart is positive and the vortex chart after getting up in extreme reading with the green line, it's been coming down. Now it's starting to turn back up. The bullish percent index is above 50 and continuing to advance. That is positive. Small and mid cap growth continues to chop sideways. Mid cap growth is outperforming small cap growth right now. They're both hanging in there, but they're still in longer term uptrends. The financial sector is showing some improvement and recently generated a golden cross. And our longer term new high, new low study continues to be positive and showing improvement now each day. So our conclusion, we are positive but overbought. Is there weakness potentially developing? We can say that in the short and intermediate term where we're still positive in the long term. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.